Hi everybody, very welcome to Mentor and yet another video podcast. I hope you're all doing fantastic. So, today I'm going to talk about wind shear. What is wind shear? When can you expect wind shear? And how do we as professional pilots uh, deal with a predictive wind shear warning and with an active uh, wind shear warning? So, stay tuned. I think you're going to like this one. Right, so first of all, uh, wind shear. We should probably talk a little bit about what wind shear is. So a wind shear is a a change in the vertical wind that the aircraft is subjected to during a prolonged period of time. So for example, uh, you take off in 10 knots headwind and all of a sudden as you're taking off and you're getting up a couple of, um, a couple of feet, then it turns to a 30 knots tailwind. Okay, and that stays for a while. So the, it becomes a an extreme difference in airspeed because of the wind that the aircraft is subjected to. That's the, the kind of easy way of, of explaining what a wind shear is. Now, when can you expect a wind shear? Well, you can expect a wind shear whenever you have uh, cumulonimbus, which is thunderstorm activity around uh, an airport of departure or arrival. Or if you are taking off and it's extremely windy and the aircraft is surrounded by things like um, hills or mountains or it could even be because of buildings that create vortexes as the wind is moving over them. Um, Whenever you are, whenever we expect that there might be a risk of wind shears we always take that into account, we include it in the briefing, and of course, if there's thunderstorm activity directly in the path of the aircraft when we're about to take off or land, we're just not going to take off or land. All right, so say that we are, we should start by talking about the two different systems, and I'm referring to the systems on the 737-800 that I'm flying now, it might be different on an Airbus, for example, but there are two systems involved in wind shear detection and wind shear warning system. It's the weather radar and it's the ground proximity warning system, the GPWS. So the weather radar is what's scanning to detect wind shear. We try to turn the weather radar on as soon as we are being cleared to enter the runway. And the reason for that is that it takes about 12 seconds for the weather radar to start scanning and start detecting wind shear. So if we push it on as we're entering the, air, the, the runway, it means that those 12 seconds will be gone when we're facing the takeoff direction on the runway. And uh, it will start scanning and in the takeoff mode, it will scan for about three nautical miles and it will scan up to about 1200 feet. And it will give warnings, so wind shear ahead, wind shear ahead, for example or monitor radar display, or wind shear, go around, wind shear. Those are the warnings that you can expect that is based on the predictive wind shear, okay? And there's a difference between a predictive wind shear and a, an actual wind shear, which I'll come to in a second. So predictive wind shear warning is one of the reasons why we would reject a takeoff, even if the aircraft has accelerated above 80 knots. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to do a separate podcast on um, rejected takeoff later on. But um, the takeoff role is divided into two different stages where up to the aircraft has accelerated to 80 knots is called the low speed regime for which we can reject for basically any system malfunction. But above 80 knots, we only reject for predictive wind shear, airplane unable or unsafe to fly, and engine failure or fire. Okay. So predictive wind shear is one of those uh, reasons to reject even in a high speed regime, which tells you a little bit about how concerned we are when it comes to the wind shear. Okay, so if we take off, we don't have a reject, uh, sorry, we don't have a predictive wind shear warning and we get airborne and then we get what's called an actual a hard wind shear warning. A hard wind shear warning is generated when the ground proximity warning system is sensing that it's in a wind shear condition. And it's different. You will have a two-tone siren followed by wind shear. So it will sound wind shear, wind shear, wind shear. Okay. If you hear that, then we have to immediately execute the wind shear escape maneuver. All right. There's no question. There's no looking at each other, thinking about it. It's just executed. The pilot flying will have to execute the wind shear escape maneuver. And the way to do that 
is the pallet flying will immediately advance the thrust levers full forward, as in firewall the engines. Push Toga as he or she is doing that, disconnect the outer throttle, and then follow the flight director commands. And that should command a 15 degree nose up attitude to start with, and then follow it. Okay. The only configuration changes that you're allowed to do is you're allowed to deselect the, out, the speed brake if that's out. No other configuration changes. So we do not take the gear up, we do not change the flap setting until we are outside of the wind shear warning. Okay. Uh, so pallet flying will be doing this and it's going to be a fairly rough maneuver because if you're in an actual wind shear, the aircraft will be tossed about like a doll like this. So the pilot flying is then focusing on trying to fly the flight director um, commands. The flight director is trying to achieve a couple of things. Like I said, initially we should be pitching for 15 degrees nose up and that's what the flight director is doing and it will keep that until it feels that it's about 600 feet per minute of climb rate. Okay, As it's then um, decreasing below that, it's going to keep the speed and it's going to keep pitching up until it reaches the speed of approximately stick shaker. And then it will command a pitch that will keep you an intermittent stick shaker. And then as you're getting out of the wind shear, that's going to reverse. Um, what this is doing is basically you're trying to keep the aircraft flying. So you are all of a sudden you have a huge rush of wind from the behind, which means that your airspeed is dropping, the aircraft is potentially dropping down out of the sky, and you are doing your absolute best to try to keep the aircraft flying and on the right keel. Okay. Pilot monitoring, uh, his or her primary objective here is to verify that the pilot flying is doing all the things, so make sure that you have full thrust, making sure that the outer throttle is disconnected, and the reason that the outer throttle should be disconnected is because Otherwise, if you get a positive wind shear, which you can get, so the speed suddenly increases. If the outer throttle is on, it might actually reduce the thrust, but you don't want that unless you are positive that you're outside of the wind shear condition. So make sure that the thrust is fully forward, that the outer throttle is disconnected, and that the pilot flying is doing what he or she is supposed to do, so they haven't gone into a subtle incapacitation because of the shock, for example. Then the pilot monitoring will call any tendencies towards terrain and any tendencies in general. So if the airspeed is decreasing or increasing, if you're descending, things like that, you call out whatever you think the pilot flying needs to know. Because you can get into a situation where the aircraft goes from a wind shear warning into a terrain warning. The wind shear has pushed the aircraft so close to the terrain that the terrain now becomes the major issue. And the only difference really between the terrain escape maneuver and the wind shear escape maneuver is that you'll increase your pitch even further. So in a terrain escape maneuver, you would pitch up to about 20 degrees initially, just to try to keep the aircraft flying. But the, as you can see here, the roles are divided between the pilot flying who is trying to fly the aircraft, the pilot monitoring is making sure that everything is correct and then making sure to call out any tendencies. That's really, really important. When <clears throat> you're out of the wind shear, if you're in a, uh, a light to moderate wind shear, what tends to happen is that the sequence after you get out of the wind shear is actually, can be even, not more dangerous, but even more complicated from a procedural point of view. Because once you're out, if this happens just after departure, you're now going to have to get back into normal conditions again. Remember, you've been sitting with full thrust here, with the flap set to whatever flap setting you have for departure. The gear is still out. You don't have a roll mode, so you're not following the standard instrument departure that you've been cleared for. You have just, up until this point, you've just concentrated on flying, getting the aircraft airborne and flying it, okay? But now, as you get out of the wind shear, you are going to have to get back into normality again. And this is where people can actually miss items. So the aircraft is now at full thrust. The first thing you're likely going to have to do is take a bit of thrust off to at least normal climb thrust, which is going to be indicated on your um, your thrust mode in the annunciator. Um, so that's the first thing. And then what I recommend that you do if you do find yourself in a situation like this is take a deep breath and then try to get your mind back into the normal takeoff maneuver. So what's the first thing? So the takeoff, or 
uh, post rate gear up. Pilot monitoring will take gear up. Uh, so we're above 400 feet. L now. Select a roll mode so the aircraft has something to navigate after. Okay, then um, bug up because you're now going to have to reject the, uh, retract the flaps. And remember, you have to make sure that as you get out of the wind shear that you're not letting the aircraft accelerate away from you and overspeeding the flaps, which could be a real danger, especially if you have a go around during the approach maneuver. So bug up, uh, flaps one, flaps up. Once that's done, then autopilot. So get sure the aircraft is trimmed, level off. Now following the flight director, then start to engage the amount, the the modes that you want. So make sure that you have now the roll mode. You've selected L now. Then maybe you want level change or vertical speed or something to get a good pitch mode in. And then once that's done, you start from the right of the MCP by selecting an autopilot, making sure that the modes are correct, engage auto throttle and then you can start to relax. Okay. Monitor the situation is now under control. If you have busted an altitude, which you might well do uh, as part of the wind shear escape maneuver, descend back to that altitude, call air traffic control and tell them that we had a moderate wind shear on departure. We have gone through the altitude. We're now descending back to 4,000 feet. Please advise any aircraft coming after us. You can have it on during the approach as well. Um, if you have a predictive, remember the predictive windshield warning was uh, was done from the uh, weather radar. It will only work if there's any moisture in the air, because the weather radar can only see vertical movements if there's moisture in the air. Uh, a predictive windshield warning on approach can be monitor radar display, if that's about outside of one and a half mile, up to three miles away. Then you can look at your navigational display and you will see that the... Um, that the wind shear is indicated on navigation display, so you can know where to maneuver. Um, you can also get the go round wind shear ahead warning, and if you get that, you can elect to either do a go around or do the wind shear escape maneuver. Okay, so there is a bit of choice if you get it as a um, as a predictive wind shear warning. However, if you get an actual wind shear warning, remember the two to two tone siren, doo -doo -doo, wind shear, wind shear then you have to execute the windshield escape maneuver and it's exactly the same as in the case of the go around sorry as in the case of the takeoff but in the go around you still you are going to have more flaps out so there is a higher likelihood that you as you get out of the windshield might overspeed flaps for example so uh, and you will have much more drag so it's potentially even more dangerous to get a windshield warning during the approach at a low altitude this is why we uh, we are so cautious when it comes to doing approaches <coughs> or takeoffs when there's um, CBs around. So if you've ever been on an aircraft and they've said that, sorry, we will not be able to land, we're going to divert to a different airport because there's uh, the weather around, it might well be because of, um, of thunderstorms in the area because we don't want to put ourselves into this kind of situation. Um, that's it really and uh, if you have questions on this as always post them below i hope that this has been beneficial to you and um, i hope that you were telling everyone about the channel and spreading the word about the channel if you like it uh, i will um, i hope you have a fantastic day guys and i'll see you next